and welcome back to Let's Talk Chicago Bears, the Christmas version, because <laughs> it is, Christmas is just a couple days away, and I'm sure everybody's just doing their last minute crap, you know, they're shopping for food, for presents, all that stuff. I was gifted, I was um, gifted a Mike, uh, Mike Dicka jersey, um, it was kind of a hand me down but I don't care a friend asked me if I'd want it and I said yes so I'm wearing Ditka today um and thank you Denise you're awesome so um yeah this is the um you know the uh, we're going to talk about the Bears obviously Sunday they're playing on Christmas Eve and wouldn't it be a wonderful Christmas gift if the Bears could at least get a win but <laughs> you know we're going to talk about that in a minute, but yeah, so I just hope that you're all, um, you know, getting ready for the holidays, and I really hope you all have a wonderful holiday, and um, welcome back. Thanks for turning me on. About um, boom, boom. Um, yep, yep, that's what I said. Uh, no, it's great. Thank you. And I got three more subscribers. I'm at 391. Hey. Maybe I'll make 400. Doubt it, but that's okay. Um, that's not why I do this. I do it because I love talking about the bears. I love just entertaining people and um, and try to make people laugh and smile while they're watching the show. And maybe they learn something. Maybe they don't. <laughs> so, but welcome back and let's let's dive in and see what's going on. Okay, so the Bears are playing um, the Arizona Cardinals on Sunday. It's the late game. Um, who thought that was a good idea to have a late game on Christmas Eve in Chicago? Seriously? So yeah, um, so you guys, I think it's the 3 or 3.30 game, something like that. So the Bears and Cardinals um, have played 92 times, which kind of surprised me, but uh, it seemed like a lot um, for a team that it's been around, but not that long. Um, the Bears have won 57 games, and the Cardinals have won 29 games. So it's kind of refreshing to be playing somebody that we've clearly beaten many, many times. And they've actually had six ties. Ties to me are losses for both teams. That's just the way I look at it. So that's that. So yeah, so let's, um, you know, get into what's going on here. So I'm going to give you a few stats. I'm not going to um, go crazy with them um, because at the end of the day, we all know the stats mean bullshit when it comes to the Bears because after I'm done reading these stats, you're going to see on paper the Bears clearly should win this game like they clearly should have won last week's game and that they did not. Um, yeah, as we know, three times this season, they were winning um, in the fourth quarter, and they lost all three of those. I mean, it, it, it you know, and, and, and Coach Fluce and his finishing, yeah, I agree. I agreed many weeks ago, and but now I think the players are finishing. The coaches let them down last week. It is my opinion. I, I don't know what's going on in Illinois, what they're saying there, but um, – the coaches didn't finish last week, and that's for sure. They cost us a win, hands down. Okay, so so the Bears, um, I always do this every week, um, the Bears compared to Arizona uh, amongst the league, the Bears are p average passing is 183 yards. That puts them 27th in the league. Not great by any means, but we are better than Arizona. Not much, but they're averaging 174 yards a game and that uh, in passing, and that puts them 29th. So really, we're even. Um, we're pretty even on rushing, too. I was really surprised about this. I, I didn't realize they had such a great a rushing attack. But the Bears are averaging 134 yards a game. That puts them fifth in the league. And Arizona is averaging 131. That puts them seventh. So we're right there. And like I said, it, that surprised me. So the Bears' offensive line, um, we're going to talk about the guy they're going to have to stop. So uh, And last week they had a rough game, um, but they played one of the best defenses, the top three defenses in the league with C Cleveland. But the Bears' uh, offensive line was just put to the test last week, that's for sure. Um the Bears are scoring an average, which is just is not enough, in my opinion. Now, in today's 
um, NFL football, you gotta you've gotta score more than 20 points a game on offense. You do, and the Bears they only scored 17 last week, which costs us the game. Um, so they're averaging 20 points a game, which puts them 22nd in the league. And Arizona is averaging 18 a game, that puts them 25th. So you can see we're very close in every category. We really are. Um, and I forgot, and I forgot to say that. Um, we are five and nine, and they are three and what? Three and eleven. So, but they've got a worse um, record, but we're very close in all these categories. Um, and points allowed by the defense, they're giving up 23 points a game. That puts us 22nd. This is the big difference. This is the only one that's really got a substantial difference. And Arizona's defense is allowing um, 26.9 points a game, and that puts them 31st out of 32 teams. So that could be to the Bears' advantage. You know, you 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 gotta go after this team, um, and you can score some points. So let's let's see that happen. Maybe that will juvenate our offense. I don't know, but let's see, right? So I didn't. I'm only gonna. I just put down these because it's not really a fair stat. I like to. I always compare to the quarterbacks, but neither quarterback has played a full season, um, and their starting quarterback, Murray, Kyle Murray. Um, he's only played five games going into this, so it's not really. But I'm still going to give you what they have so far. Fields has played 10 games. He missed several games. Right now he's got 1,976 yards passing with 14 touchdowns and eight interceptions. That's a good ratio. He's got more of that, more touchdowns uh, opposed to interceptions. He has rushed for 488 yards, but he's been sacked 35 times. I know. And I've mentioned this many times throughout the season that a lot of these sacks are on fields, not the offensive line. Sure, the offensive line broke down, but you can't hold on to the ball as long as Fields does and expect the offensive line to hold up. You got to release that ball. And that's one of his problems that he has not been able to overcome the last three years. He's just not releasing the ball quick enough, in my opinion. Um, and he and, and it seems like if his wide receiver is not like wide open or whatever, he doesn't want to throw it. And, you know, there's quarterbacks in this league that'll throw it in, in such a narrow window, and they do it. And that's what that's what makes them elite opposed to a Fields who cannot do that, where a Mahomes will do it and a Fields cannot. So that is a big difference with him right now. And Murray, um, Kyle Murray is their um, starting quarterback, and he's only played five games going into this game because he got hurt um, – did he get hurt this season or did he come off an injury? You know what? I don't know. But um, he's got 1,075 yards uh, passing in the air, eight touchdowns to five interceptions. He has rushed a little. He's rushed 155 yards, and he's been sacked 17 times. So um, basically both of them are going to be under the gun with these t- with um coming after i think that both uh, quarterbacks are going to be targets on sunday where the the defensive lines are going to come after these two quarterbacks the bears obviously are going to go after murray and we want to get to this guy and um so it, it, they, you know our lines are vulnerable so is my point so it, uh, hopefully the sacks will be down and only the only the bears defense gets the sacks right so let's just look at a little rushing comparison. Bears opposed to Arizona. The Bears have spread out their rushing amongst uh, four players. Um, amongst uh, Fields, he's got 488 yards with two touchdowns. Foreman, you know, I love Foreman. I think it was a great pickup. I don't I want to see him go anywhere next year. Foreman's got 428, uh, excuse me, 425 yards. And uh, he has not played um, every game this season either. That's something to remember. He he was inactive uh, several times. I don't get it, but he was. Um, he's got four touchdowns. Herbert's got 347 yards rushing, no touchdowns. And our rookie Johnson, who number 23, who I also love, has got 274 yards rushing with one touchdown. Now, Arizona 
doesn't spread it around like we do. They've got one solid running back, and that's Connor. And he's got 717 yards rushing by himself, and he's got five touchdowns. And then D. Uh, D. Cato. Decato has 274 rushing yards for Arizona with two touchdowns. So our our rushing attack is 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 amongst several guys. Theirs is concentrated on Connor. So the Bears defense, um, they just have to concentrate on this young kid and get him stocked because um, we gave up a lot of yards last week in the rush. Um, no, not last week. It was a couple weeks ago. We did not give up. We only gave 20, uh, 25 yards up in the rush last week. I take that back. So, But the defense has gotten better and better. But they're going to have to stop this guy because they're going to come out running clearly. Because they're, you know, they're right behind us. What was it? Um, seventh in the league in rush. So, um, you know, they, they can rush like we can. So it's going to, I think it's going to be, um, they're going to try. I thought last week was going to be a running game, and but I did say it was going to be a defensive game, and I thought that they and neither team could get the rush going at all. Neither team. We made we did better last week, but we didn't get over 100 yards, and um, so the rush is going to be bigger. I think we need to get this established this week, get that back on track like we've been before, because that only helps. Fields. It helps the offensive line. It helps our defense. Everybody. So um, it'll be interesting. I think it's going to. Both teams are going to try to come out rushing. Um, I don't know what kind of weather it's supposed to be like there, um, and so we'll see. But uh, it'll be interesting. So and then our wide receivers. Uh, I'm going to compare a couple of them. So more obviously, DJ Moore is leading our receivers with 1,123 yards with seven touchdowns. Our tight end, our awesome tight end, Clement has 571 yards rushing. Excuse me, receiving. Pickled, um, and he has six touchdowns. And Mr. Mooney, Mr. Mooney, has four oh nine yards receiving with one touchdown. Now the um, they do not the Arizona Cutters do not have anybody over a thousand yards, um, but they do have three solid wide receivers. McBride has seven hundred and twelve uh, rushing uh, receiving. <laughs> Godlin receiving touchdown or receiving yards. <coughs> Excuse me, he's got two touchdowns. Uh, Brown has 574 uh, receiving yards with four touchdowns, and Wilson comes up with 435 with two touchdowns. So they got some solid running. Uh, they got some solid receivers like we do. So um, we'll yeah we'll have to see what. Um, happens with the with the receiving because Kyle Murray is a good passer um so I'm not sure I think they're going to come out and uh, attack the Bears rushing first and then they're going to try to mix it up with the um the passing but last week we really did very well but it was also a backup quarterback now this is their starting quarterback um, you know, everybody says he's really, really good. I've only seen him play a few times. I, I don't see Arizona play a lot. Um, I usually pick other teams. I'm not a big fan of Arizona, so I don't watch a lot of them. So I'm not all that familiar with their team, to be honest with you. But on paper, um, at the end of the day, the Bears should beat them. But we all know that don't mean shit. Okay, let's talk about our defenses. Our defense is the Bears... Um, lead in every category except for one basically so the bears have their the bears defense has 25 sacks and the majority of these sacks have come in the last five day games meaning welcome sweat to the chicago bears because when sweat joined the team things changed dramatically for that defensive line they've got work to do but they are headed in the right direction. We, you know, this line, you remember when we started this year was young. There was only one returning starter on the Bears defensive line. So a lot of young and, 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 and a few veterans added and, and it took them a while to gel and they really, really didn't gel until Sweet joined them because Sweet is so good. He gets double teamed a lot, which opens up lanes for other guys. And that's why our sacks have gone up. I mean, we were, dead last last year in sacks and we were at the bottom of the field 
uh, in sacks earlier in the season. Now we're, 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 we're in the middle of the pack. Arizona's defense has 32 sacks. So, again, that's what I'm saying. The Bears' um, offensive line is going to have another tough week. Bears beat them handily in interceptions, and that's something else. In the last uh, you know, five, six games, the Bears all of a sudden woke up in that department. I've been waiting and waiting. I've said it earlier in the season. You know, In the days, in years past, you always saw at least one interception or turnover by the Bears defense, and we weren't seeing it these last couple years. Um, but this, they all of a sudden woke up. We have 18 interceptions to um, Arizona's nine. We have 15 forced fumbles, but we only recovered five of them. So when you force a fumble, you really need to get on that ball. They have eight forced fumbles, and they have recovered six of them. Um, Our leading tackler, and I got to give him props, congratulations, Edwards, our homegrown linebacker from Lake Villa, Illinois. Lake Villa, Lake Villa. My hometown, it's not where I was born in Illinois, but I spent more of my life in Lake Villa 32 or 33 years before I moved to uh, Vegas um, six years ago. So, But Edwards has 137 tackles. He's leading the team by far, and their leading tackler has 90, and that's White. His name is White. So that that uh, our t- tacklers you know what big big difference right the defense okay so our defense and I, I ranked I don't usually do this but because they're both bad teams I wanted to see the difference so the defense ranked the Bears are ranked after last week they're ranked on defense 15th in the league and Arizona's ranked 31 out of 32 teams so that's Another good thing. See, overall defense, they're just not good. So the Bears better put up some freaking points. Now they beat us in offense. No, they don't. Take that back. Again, pickles. <laughs> the Bears offense, total offense ranks 23 in the league, which just isn't that great. But Arizona's offense is 29th. So we're, we're, we're better we stand out defensively over this team and nothing else. Everything else, I, I offense, it seems very close to me. Um, we're, we're every, all the numbers are similar. You know, we, we're beating them. Obviously, Fields has more yards, but he's also played played more games than uh, Kyle Murray. And um, But our defense is really getting better. I mean, they were ranked 20th before the Cleveland game, and they moved up to 15. So that's pretty good. I'd like to see the Bears' defense come out strong again this week um, and just be bullies on the field like they were last week, steal those balls away, get in Kyle Murray's face, force him out of the pocket, Force him to run and knock him down, you know, because he's a, he's not a tall, tall quarterback. So, and I'd like to see some of these defensive linemen get their hands up in the air because he's not a tall quarterback. And let's see if we can knock down some of those um, passes. So basically, the Bears on paper should win this game, and should do, and it's at home. I think they should win it handily, but again especially after last week's game and several games this season. You know, we, we would have won those three games that we were winning in the fourth quarter. We would be eight. What would we be? We'd be eight and I don't know, whatever. We would be around 500. <laughs> You're doing, please do the math for me. <clears throat> but we would have eight wins opposed to five. And we would probably finish the season around 500 if we had won those last three those three games we should have won because I think we could win Sunday, and I believe we can win next week in, in, against Atlanta. So um, uh, I think we could. I was going into this season hoping the Bears finished right around 500. At 500 or right around, I didn't expect any more, and obviously it's not going to happen, but um, it should have. And a lot of it is the coaches, Getsy, offensive coordinator, horrible. You know, I, I just, it, it's tough. So, but the Bears again, and, and Murray is back, he's good. Um, so it's going to be, the Bears are going to have to stop the run for sure. And, and they are going to throw, because this kid can throw. It's going to be, a, a, I think, 
it's going to be an offensive game more than last week was. Uh, but I hope the Bears are win it. Um, I don't. It's not going to be a defense game like last week was. But I hope our defense steps up and really does their job. And I think they will. Um, but you know, I've been thinking about this Fields thing. You know, everybody's got an opinion. Keep them. Get rid of them. Um, you know, what's the problem? It's been three years. Um, I haven't seen a. I, I've seen improvement, but not enough. In my opinion, Fields, one of his biggest problems is he does not release the ball quick enough. He does not read the defenses quick enough. And and, and, and this is all together, and he doesn't make the decisions quick enough. And under fire, he doesn't seem to do well at all. Under When it's the end of the game, and if we're trying to hold on to a lead or get a league, he just seems to crumble. He does. So, in my opinion, those are his things, and I, I just don't know if, you know, we get rid of Getsy. I believe Getsy's going to be gone one one way or another, whether they get rid of Flutes or not. I don't know Flutes or not. I think after some of the decisions he's made this season, he should be gone as well. But Getsy for sure has to go. So the question I say is, okay, say we get rid of Getsy, you bring in a better OC, and and he says I can work with this kid. I could turn him around. Do you keep Fields for another year in his fourth year of his contract, his last year of the contract, and see what he has? Or do you try to trade him now where you feel he might have more value? Because people are still unsure about Fields. So, you know, well, he has three more games to prove himself. And if they were to trade him, people might tend to give a little bit more for him now because of the uncertainty, like maybe we can turn him around. Let's get him to our team. But if we keep him another year and it turns out it's Fields and not the, well, let me step back a minute. We know Getsy's awful. So I'm not going to say that, um, you know, he was awful. It's still, he, I think he can't call a game. He, he, he doesn't call the game for the team that's on the field. And I don't think he's called a game to help Fields at all. I really don't. Um, so, you know, so let's say the Bears, so they keep him. Guess he's gone. We got a new OC and Fields doesn't show any improvement. Then you try to, then his contract's up. You can't trade him. You just, then you, then you don't resign him and you get absolutely nothing for him. So it's like, do the Bears... Just cut cut their losses now. Try to trade them in the offseason and go get a quarterback in the draft because we know we have two first-round picks. That's the million-dollar question. And, you know, I, I change my mind every day. But, you know, because I hate starting all over again, but, you know, with a quarterback, but I just don't think we have a choice here. I just – he should have been improved by year three, although he does have Getsy as his OC. So that's – you know, there's – it's that slippery slope, right? So – I don't know. So, so the and let's talk about my threes. You always, I always mention my threes. Everybody's out there going, I know. Time of possession, turnovers, penalties. Time of possession, got to win it. You win the threes, you're in it, or you're going to win it. Last week, the Bears won two out of the threes, uh, the two out of the three threes, and the other one was um, two minutes apart on a time of possession. So the Bears, but I say you're in it, or you're going to win it, and the Bears were in it and should have won it because um, they did win the turnover battle and they won the penalty battle. They lost the time of possession last week by two minutes. So time of possession, so important. It keeps your offense on the field, their defense on the field, their offense off the field, and their our defense off the field. So very, very important. Um, turnovers. I mean, turnovers can change a game like nothing. So it can just momentum swing is so helpful and it's just such a, it's such an uplifting thing. And then it gets in the other team's heads, especially the quarterback, if it's an interception. So turnovers, but we've been winning those week after week after week, these last five weeks or so, five, six weeks. And then penalties, five or less penalties. And, and the Bears were good. They only had four last week. They've been terrible in penalties this year. They were the top three in least penalties last year. And this year, I don't know what happened, but that is just lack of discipline. 
and coaching. I blame coaching and, and lack of discipline on the field with the Bears players, and you just can't have penalties. Penalties just, I cannot stand penalties. They are my biggest bugaboo. I mean, on, when you're and, and the, the problem this year too, the majority of our penalties have been on offense. If you go back and you start to look, you can see more offensive penalties on the Bears than defense, and that just shoots them in the foot. You know, the Bears get a first down penalty. Now it's first and 20 right and your play your playbook completely goes out and then they've had you know several penalties on plays and then they do the three and outs you know between the three and outs and the penalties you don't stand a chance because they're not good enough on offense yet they're getting there I mean we have a running game we have wide receivers um our offensive line is coming together um you know so we should be scoring more points, and that's where I start. It's with Getze and Fields. So the Bears win the threes. You know what You know what I say. You know what I say. Okay, Bears fans. And so this game on um, Sunday, Christmas Eve, um, I I think the Bears I, – I, I just know the Bears can win it. It's not like I think – I know it. Like I knew it last week. They should have won that game. And they should win this game. But how many times have we said that this season? I mean, it's 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 redundant. And I'm so tired of hearing finish. But even though that is true. Um, oh, my hair. <laughs> Stop it, Lynn. <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. I can get so distracted. I swear to God. Um, it's all these years of the, what I've done to my brain, you know. <laughs> so anyways so really the Bears keep the penalties down get some turnovers and get in Kyle Murray's face get sacks defensive line has to have another stellar game our backfield is going to be tested again but I, I'm very confident in our backfield I think we've got we've got a great backfield and we're only going to get better because some of these guys are on year two like Brisker oh number nine I love this kid watch him on Sunday keep an eye on number nine he is all over the field all the time he is just wonderful and our rookie 29 Stevenson he, you know what, he's gotten better and better. You know, he, every once in a while he gets a penalty, but he's a rookie. But he's really coming. He made a great interception last week. I mean, a great one. And 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 Gordon and 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 JJ JJ has just been balling the last few games, right? Because he wants a new contract. And I did read that he wants to stay with the Bears. So the Bears really got to sign this kid. They cannot keep giving away and letting players go. You want to build a solid defense, then you got to sign him. You got to stand up, you know, grab your balls and sign this kid. He deserves it. He's a great player. He's a team leader. He loves being on the Bears. And, and everybody, you know what? Sign him. We're done giving people away. Now it's time to keep our players, right? Yes. So, polls make the right decision here. So, again, good backfield. Our linebackers are solid. Um, so, if we play smart air free football everybody 100 percent in the game they do their job 100 percent we're going to win this game eh, wait a minute we have two coaches called one called fluce and the other one getsy there's our problem the decisions that these guys have been making terrible terrible decisions fluce it started i mentioned it last week it started in the first game when when he the Bears were on the fifty yard line with Green Bay, I'm mentioning it again. They went for it on first at third and one. They put Comment behind center, stupid ass, and then they go forward on fourth and one and don't get it. And they give Green Bay right out of the gate, um, first quarter, after like three minutes, four minutes into the game, they give Green Bay the ball on the fifty yard line. Stupid ass decision. Should have punted the ball and put them within their five yard, five to ten yard line, and make them go the field. And then it just kept getting worse all year. And then we saw it last week. The decision makings, some of the dumb things. I would have gone for that field goal at right before half. I mean, you had nothing to lose. What if he makes it? Then the game's tied at the end. And there was another time where we were on our side of the field, and instead of taking a field goal, they went for it on fourth and one, didn't make it. I felt the Bears left six points on the field last week, which would have won that game. So 
on paper, and it, when you talk about the players, they're gonna they should win this game, yeah. But then we've got the ank the 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 anchors around the ink the ankles of the players, Flus and Getsy, especially Getsy. I mean, terrible. So. I don't know, guys. I really would love to have a wonderful Christmas gift for all of us Bears fans because God knows we deserve it and get a win on Sunday. And then a win in Atlanta. No, it next because it's in Soldier Field. And then next week, Atlanta's coming to Soldier Field. And I want us to beat them too. And if we can beat these two, win these two games going into Green Bay for the last game of the season, maybe we'd have some momentum and we can beat them too. Although good news, I read Green Bay's out of the playoff hunt. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> it's always a good day when Green Bay is bad like us. <laughs> I think it's going to start to turn around. I do. Um, I think in the next year or two, if we could just get this quarterback problem figured out, right? So, all right, everybody. Let's hope we bring a, a victory home. I won't be back. I won't be doing a show for a couple weeks. I won't be back until January 5th. I'll come back the Friday before the Green Bay game, and we'll discuss that. And, and, and I'll throw in the last two games that I, I didn't air. I, I'm gonna be, I've got a lot of family obligations, so I won't really be able to do a show. So that's my thing. I think the Bears could win. They should win. Let's win. Okay? And I hope all of you have a wonderful, wonderful holiday season. Um, have a merry, merry holiday. Have a happy new year. Let's make 2024 better than 2023. It isn't really that hard, is it? And, 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 and this is a, a time of year that everybody is very generous and sweet and loving. I wish we could do with that 365 days of the year. Stop hate. Stop negativity. Stop, um, you know, prejudice. Love one another. Be kind all year round. We are all in this together. It doesn't matter. People, there's a lot of good people out there. There's a lot of weirdos, but there's a lot of good people out there. And we need to stick together, Bears fans. And, and, and I know we can do it. Let's make a change in 2024. Let's all individually say to ourselves, I'm going to make a change in, 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 in when I go out into this world and how I treat people and how I um, act around people. Let's, let's all make a change in 2024 to make this a better world we live in because we deserve it and and I appreciate you all watching me my heart is filled I say this every all the time I mean it I cannot tell you how much it means for me that people watch me um you know I try to make you laugh I um you know this will make you laugh I mean oh I haven't said this in a while you know this is my father's face on a woman's body. It's just not fair. And I'm 5'1". Really? <laughs> so hopefully that made you laugh. And I do try to make you laugh. And I appreciate the support and people watching me. I really, really do. It means a whole lot to me. And I and I enjoy doing it. I love talking about the bears and making people laugh. And uh, I love to sing. But, you know, I sing the victory song, the touchdown song when the bears win, but they've only won five times. So uh, you've only been graced with my voice five times this season. Um, but have a great holiday. I'll see you January 5th. Everybody be safe. Um, smart, make smart decisions over the holidays. And we love the Bears. Let's root them on to a victory. And what else? That's it. Go Bears and keep on rocking and rolling from Vegas, baby. Happy holidays. Love y'all. <laughs>